another organized voice of the cotton farmers. Uh, so I call upon Mr. Manish Daga, the president of All India Cotton Farmer Producers Organization, to give a presentation on the White Revolution 2.0. PPT. Before I start my short uh, presentation, I would like to thank City. I would like to thank um, City CDRA and the speakers on the dais, and especially the textile commissioner of India for enlightening us with their views and the views are not actually for today. They are forever. And if we are able to implement even 50% of what is being said right now on stage, I think nothing can stop India from here on. And this is the basis of my uh, presentation today. I uh, Please retain slide number one. Yeah. So where we stand today and where we look to see ourselves, tomorrow is what I uh, stand here for. Uh, Six Sigma is the basis of my presentation. What is the actual problem? And what is the achievable, actionable, sustainable solution that we are looking at? And then we start to ask the questions, who, what, how, when? If we don't answer this question right now, today, I think all this will only remain talk on stage and good to listen to, but we will not be able to achieve the results because India is on a verge of a phenomenal growth, especially in textiles. There is a big space available for us. And if you are not able to capitalize right now, I think this opportunity may not come for a long time. So uh, then title of the presentation, White Revolution 2.0, Developing Sustainable Cotton Value Chain for the World Markets. Let us not look into only ourselves, but the world. I would like to start with a sh short Sankrit Sloka. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Ma Kashit Dukh Bhag Bhavet. As a representative of the farmers, I like to you know, reinstate the importance of this shloka is, if we desire happiness for ourselves, we need to ensure the happiness of others. If we desire prosperity for ourselves, we need to ensure the prosperity of others. And that is how we start this presentation. The first slide is the challenge. Please change the slide. Please look at the blocks first and the blocks last. The block first is year 2009, when India was already into six years of BT seed. The yields were growing phenomenally till then. And then something happened in 2009. The crop was 305 lakh bales in that year. And the year 2021-22, this is the current year. The crop is 307 lakh bales. Have we lost a decade? In spite and despite of all the technologies that we have, increase in land, increase in MSP of seed cotton, growth of the textile industry, the industry has grown nearly 100% in the last 14 years. But the crop remains the same or even lower. And the second thing I want to point out in this graph is look at the fall. After 2014, every third year we have seen a 10% fall in production. Is this the trend we are getting used to and we want to remain used to? Or is it something that we do right now that can reverse the trend and assure a surplus production for India for the next few decades? so that the industry can plan its growth and the government can plan its policies. This is the question we need to ask ourselves. Slide three will show the impact. I'm only enlightening the impact, which I have read in newspapers in, uh, on government portals. Next slide, please. In four, five points, highest ever cotton prices, May 2022, killing domestic and export markets, unprecedented price volatility. The price grew by 65% between October and May. And the rise was about 68% in the previous year. So back-to-back -back growth of 130% in prices. Source CI spot prices. Partial or complete closure of many units. 
May 2022 to September 2022 has seen a phenomenal reversal in the growth of the industry. Fall in exports, rise in imports. Exports fell by 20% and imports rose by 273% in cotton and waste in the six months of financial year 2022. What next? Again, the same question. How can we be assured of a surplus cotton crop and reasonable prices and low cotton volatility so that we can plan our growth? So what has happened 50 years back can be a model case for us. 50 years back, 1970, Amul created the first white revolution. The operation flood, the dream of uh, Mr. Vargas, white revolution period intended to make India a self-dependent nation in milk production, and it did. Five decades from now, we are seeing the dominance of India in milk, but the foundation was the first white revolution which happened. Can we have that white revolution in cotton? Is it possible? This is what I uh, wish to invite all of you. Operation White Gold, the White Revolution 2.0. Next slide, please. Aim to make India a self-dependent nation in production of cotton and number one in export of value-added textiles. This is very important. Exporting cotton is not an achievement, but exporting value-added goods is definitely. Amul is a classic example of realizing a tower of a vision on the foundation of strong building blocks like effective rural management, cooperative management, and professional approach. Let us see what the key building blocks can be if we want to make White Revolution 2.0, Operation White Gold a success. Next slide, please. The first building block is create a national body of cotton growing farmers and their FPOs. Now, this word FPO, Farmer Producer Organization, people are hearing since the last six months since I've been representing the farmers on this stage. It's not a new phenomena at all. The phenomena is two decades old. The concept was created by the government two decades back, but it has picked up momentum in 2017 onwards when the current government declared incentives for farmer producer organization. Farmer producer organizations are companies like your, your normal companies. They are listed under the Companies Act. They are registered, they are organized, they are semi uh, corporates, they are professional companies of farmers where only farmers can be members. So these are the FPOs, organized farmers and their farmer producer organization under All India Cotton Farmer Producer Organization Association. This is what we started three years back in 2020, just after lockdown when we understood that um, the farmers were facing an issue and industries were facing a very, very bigger issue of sustainability. So it is an apex body of farmer producer organization across the cotton growing states of India, already 102 other farmer producer organization comprising of nearly one lakh farmers are members right now in this organization. This is guided by a team of experts uh, in um, advisory and technical, many of whom are speakers today, like Chi Suresh Bhai Kotak, um, Dr. Mai was there, Dr. Prasad, we have already invited, C Sirkot um, uh, director is, is is in the technical committee and uh, Dr. Keshav Karanti, he's also part of the advisory committee. Such people are, and, and Dr. G. Chandrasekhar, who was going to lead a panel today, is also part of the advisory committee. So guided by expert, this is how we started. We spoke to them, we took their guidance, what is need to be done, which model to follow, and we shortlisted the Amul model, and this is how uh, uh, we have started. You can see the structure. There are farmers, there are self-help groups, there are women groups below. Above that, there is a farmer producer organization. Above that, there is a federation. And above that, there is an association. This is how the structure has evolved in the last few years. Next slide, please. Block number two is a market phase company. Now we know the model of uh, operation, that is the Amul model, but how to do it in agriculture produce? Cotton is not milk. It has a very long supply chain. And we studied the Azim Premji University model. It is a fantastic model of how farmer producers companies can work and grow. And they have strongly suggested a market phase company. One FPO should be made such that it is a federation it, and it knows the market. It deals with the market, it aggregates, it trains, it processes, and it trades also. All farmer producer companies cannot be expected to do that. So we need to have a federation, a group of FPOs who are specifically trained for that purpose. And that was the model. And that is what we built that on. Please return the last slide. And uh, 
make code of conduct, have dispute um, mechanisms in place, have SOPs to increase the yield and productivity. And uh, I will just share an example in the coming slides, how uh, this uh, productivity model has evolved. The third building block is, first we created a state body, then a national body. Can we have integration of that national body in, into a supply chain? That is the third, third building block. Uh, spread, spread the knowledge to other states, train and um, make leaders out of other state pharma producer organizations so, so that they can be part of the mainstream to make Operation White Gold, a success in India, a ever surplus cotton uh, growing country. Building block number four is the most critical part. Please read in the last slide. Is participation of the industry. No, the last, still you go back. Building block number four. Yes. Industry is so important. This supply chain will not be complete without the industry, madam. The industry has to participate in it has to participate for its own benefit. We do not want grants. The farmers are not asking grants. Don't give us any money. Give us mm -hmm. contracts. Enter into a farming contract, like, like, like Sri Prabhakaran ji said, contract farming before the sowing season that is possible. We will grow cotton of your choice. We will use seeds of your choice. We will give you quality of your choice. But we, there has to be a contract for that. After we grow, you cannot sell that you, 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 you should have done this. So contract farming is one option. Second option is a marketing contract itself just before the harvesting season. If that can be done, this participation will lead to a win-win situation for the producer community, for the uh, trading community, for the manufacturing community, as well as for the government. Because in all these cases, we have never asked for a single rupee from anybody. And we are still not asking that. For the government, it must ensure a level playing field so that such contracts happen and such contracts are honored on both the sides. So if you can give that platform, you can have such meetings, if you can have such commitments in presence of government as a facilitator only. <laughs> yes, and uh, I would be happy to share that we have currently signed a contract with a European company and they have brought an American buyer. So the contract has been already signed. It's a trial contract of 500 metric tons and, and next year it will go, it's going to be 5,000 metric tons. So the, the already underway and we invite the domestic industry to also uh, get into such <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so the next is Operation White Gold target outcome. What Amul achieved and what cotton um, can achieve is create a national cotton grid linking producers throughout India with the consumers. Don't we need to have that? Second is reduce the seasonal and regional price variations. Prices are different in Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, South India, Central India. And also seasonally, the price are different. Can we have some uniformity on that or some control over the volatility? Ensure that the producer gets a fair deal of the share that the price buyers pay by cutting out superfluous middlemen. Cotton is not reaching out to ginning factories directly from the farmers. Only 13% of the farmers are selling directly to ginners. And any given day, only 33% of farmers are selling to CCI in even worse come worse MSPS. CCI has never procured more than 125 lakh bags out of Indian total production of 350 lakh bags. So we need more, more interaction. We need more, more participation. The last is the bedrock of program is village cotton farmer producer organizations which produce cotton and provide inputs and services. We will do whatever the industry asks us to do with the help of our advisory and technical committee. We will give the desired outputs. We have taken the first step. We invite you to join us in this mission. And what we need to make in the stage three, the first stage is state-wise, the second stage is nationwide. Third stage is build a sustainable supply chain. We have seen last year supply chains have been very fragile. Even at one lakh rupees a candy mill, they did not receive delivery. Even at 14,000 rupees to a quintal, Jainas did not receive delivery of the kapas. And even when the price fell in the last month from 9,600 rupees to 8,800 rupees, some of the factories did not take deliveries from the farmers. So the supply chains are not very robust right now. They need to be made such that. And what can that do give with definitely better yield and production, better quality, more transparency and a robust marketing system? 
more interaction between the farmers, the farmer organized groups and the consumers is going to give that. This will increase the profitability, credibility, dependability, competitiveness of the industry, help us achieve the target of 100 billion USD exports in the next five years. Next point, please. This is the five point mantra. We have made a panel of India's best cotton yield taking farmers. They have been awarded recently by the Cotton Association of India. They are across five states of India. And we have discussed the best practices that they use to attain high yields, to attain high yields with scientists from Indian Society of Cotton Improvement, CICR and ICAC in Washington. And we have shortlisted these five common set of services that these farmers follow. If we publish this and if we promote this, I'm sure the yield component is going to be very different in the next three years because these are the best practices and these are the low hanging fruits. These farmers are already achieving a yield of 800 to 1000 quintals per kg per hectare right now with their traditional practices. High density plantation, yes, we need to do, but that is going to take some time. But this low hanging fruit, this current available resources we can use right now, the five points are soil, Anything in BT from 2003 onwards, we need to work on the soil because the period is very less. We previously used to take seven to eight pickings. Now we take two to three pickings in BT. In high density, it's going to be one picking only. The soil needs to be enriched and enriched with input from the farm itself. The more livestock we have, the more plant shredder machine that we use. These plant shredder machines we are using now, CCI, I thank Cotton Corporation of India for providing us the shredder machine. In our project, we will shred the dry cotton plant. We will make vermicompost and, and biocompost out of them and we will enrich the soil. These processes are continuously going on in many of our projects. So soil is very important, but enriching by regenerative inputs is also important. Second is sowing. Normally the sowing in India is done from east to west, but all these best yield taking farmers are sowing from north to south because they have studied the science of sunlight. Sunlight falling on plant throughout the day in summer or winter or monsoon, the plants need to have that adequate amount of sunlight to make nutrition and not to south sowing provides that. We have the, the whole, whole nutrition cycle in place and we can explain to anybody who wishes to understand in person why this is so important. And even across the world, the countries which are taking highest yield, the sowing is not to south. Whereas in India, it is east to west. Right. Third is irrigation and fertigation. Prabhagaji mentioned, uh, even Prashanji mentioned, why not irrigation? Can we have a micro uh, finance system? Can we have a CSR based system in irrigation? Why irrigation is not happening is very obvious. The farmer has to pay first and then he gets the reimbursement. That is not happening right now. Even after 60 to 70 percent subsidy being offered, that is not happening. Can we have some microfinance option for the farmers? And can we have some CSR activity here? Then that can immediately impact the yield. Second is fertigation, application of fertilizers through irrigation. That saves 30 percent of cost immediately. So cost cutting is also important. Yield announcement also important. That fourth is detopping. There cannot be management that Suresh Bhai was talking about. Detopping of plants increases the yield by nearly 20 to 25 percent. The machine cost is very dismal. It is only 600, 700 rupees to a machine. We have distributed many machines to our farmers. The, the industry can take that initiative and, and, and start to distribute and educate the farmers about this. And this, this, this innovation has been made by the farmer itself. One of our farmers had made the innovation of the detopping machine and we are selling at only 600 rupees to our project farmers. Use of technology. Now we have made a Cotton Guru Maha FPO mobile app. After studying so many apps, we understood that the farmer cannot apply uh, six to seven app for price one, for inputs one, for productivity one, for disease one. That is not possible. So we have a common app. As a trial, we just put that app in the lockdown period. Today, 17,000 farmers have downloaded the app it is providing first-hand information on farm mapping. We map the farm of the farmer. He's able to see his farm on his own mobile. 
then we have input management on the app, then we have price we give daily, six days, next six days, weather report is uh, given on that app and prices of three neighboring mandis are also given sometimes on their app. So this technology interventions can uh, go a long way in, in increasing the deal. These are the five points uh, that I wish to share to all of you coming to conclusion now. Why Revolution 2.0 is the need of the hour to make India self-reliant, dependent, uh, self-dependent nation in production of cotton and numero, you know, in the word Suresh Bhai used in export of value-added textiles. FPOs have evolved as a new generation producer-led organization to help smallholder farmers receive benefits of aggregation and economics of scale and provide ease of procurement for the buyer. So it's a win-win situation, both the side need one role model like Amul, my FPO can, can become the role model with your support and your blessings. Encourage level playing field in contract farming and in uh, purchase contracts to make uh, Operation White Gold a success. Prashanji just shared an example of PepsiCo, how they have done for potato. Can anybody do it for cotton right here, right now? Thank you. Kisan Hasega, Pradesh Basega. The last slide is uh, the structure. Uh, of the organization, the All India got an FPO for who, who, whom I stand here for, and I thank all of you for a patient listening. Thank you. Thank you, Manish, for a very strong pitch for the critical role of FPOs and what uh, Cotton Guru is doing in this field for strengthening the cotton value chain. 